So to, to start with today, I, I wanted to talk about cloud storage. And in particular, cloud storage is a very fascinating topic because of the capabilities that are available when you use cloud uh, providers. And probably the, the number one way to think about cloud storage is this concept of infinity. And it means that you have a CPU that's effectively uh, inf inf infinite. You have the disk IO that's effectively infinite. And then you also have um, the uh, storage that's effectively infinite. And so as a result, you can build really sophisticated solutions by using uh, cloud companies. In particular, probably the central component to all cloud companies is their data lake. And in the data lake, this is where you would build, let's say, uh, a machine learning pipeline, right? We could build a ML pipeline inside of a data lake. Uh, we also could build out um, just storage for maybe data engineering. Uh, if you're gonna build uh, maybe a business analytics uh, pipeline, uh, you also could do maybe web hosting. That's another thing you can do with uh, a data lake is you could put a statically hosted website, maybe using a technology like Hugo, which is a, a really good static hosting technology. Uh, and all of this can be done automatically. Uh, these pipelines can be set up because of the fact that things will, will really grow up and down uh, according to the requests. Uh, and as a result, it's, it's flexible. So you can, you can think of it as something that's always there. You can build out lots of different services with it. And uh, the other great thing about cloud storage is in the case of AWS, as one example, there are 11 nines of reliability. So what this means in practice is that it, it's, it's probably around, I think, 10 milliseconds of, of downtime per year. Uh, it, so really the, the, the information that's available here uh, is, is always gonna be available because of how much redundancy. A, a few other things that are probably good to point out as well, if you take most of the cloud providers, they also have uh, different pricing as well. So in terms of pricing, what you'll see is that if you wanted something that had uh, maybe infrequently accessed data, so I'll just say IA, you can pay less money for certain pieces of storage. So it's almost like putting your, your, your personal possessions into a storage container somewhere. It'll be less money because you don't have access to it more frequently. It's the same thing with data. You can put it into these different bins and even as well, <clears throat> What you can do is you can actually archive it. In the case of AWS, they have something called Glacier and you can archive the data. So really the, the way that you build complex systems or globally available social networks or machine learning companies or AI companies is to first start with the, the data lake and, and start to build these, these capabilities on, on top of it. Uh, the, the next component of cloud storage that I'll talk about are some of the things that are available in terms of cloud storage. So what are what are some of the offerings? A really good example of this would be AWS. They probably have the most offerings uh, and they have object storage. And that's really the backbone of, of what the data lake is. And in terms of object storage, what you would do is put in uh, you know, files and pictures and, and things like that. So we'll just say file, uh, maybe a, a, a image, videos. Uh, and then another offering they have is uh, databases. And they have many different types of databases as well, which can be confusing at first, but what is useful about having so many different databases is that you can pick maybe several databases for your project. So you could pick let's say a traditional uh, relational database, uh, or you could pick a key value database. A good example of that would be DynamoDB. 
is there a key value database? And I'll show that in a, in a little bit, uh, how useful it is to build things with uh, DynamoDB. Uh, another option could be a graph database. Many problems fit a uh, graph database really nicely. So for example, uh, social network analysis can, can work really well in a graph database. There's also search engines. Uh, they have elastic search on AWS. Uh, so there's many different types of, of database offerings. And you can, in many cases, pick several of them and use them at once uh, on a particular project. Another thing they have is ML platforms. And so the ML platforms uh, are, are really designed to, to sit on top of the data lake and also version assets. And so they'll version the, the model itself and also the data that was used. So you can detect things like data drift. <clears throat> Additional to that, another thing you can do with in terms of the storage offerings uh, is use these ETL systems. And an ETL stands for extract, uh, trans transfer and load. And what this means is that you can actually take some kind of a pipeline and build it to, to do operations uh, in, a, in a company. And this is really a common workflow if you were going to build something for business analytics or for, for maybe uh, a data engineering aspect uh, of a company is to automatically clean the data, put it into a format that can be useful. And, and on, in particular, let's say the AWS platform, they have QuickSight, which is a visualization tool that works with uh, ETL um, products. They also have Glue, and Glue is a automatic uh, ETL pipeline. And then there's also uh, a, a tool called Athena. And Athena can query the, the, the catalogs that are created by Glue. So it can go into, let's say, Amazon S3, uh, keep track of everything that's in there. And then Athena, you can write SQL queries and, and get, ac get access to it. So not only are there the low-level primitives in the cloud, but there's lots of different uh, offerings that are available. And I guess the other, the other two big ones that, I, that aren't on, on here yet uh, are in terms of uh, the, the, the servers themselves. So let's, let's just take EC2, for example. On EC2, uh, there's, there's really uh, a couple primary types of storage that you would use. One is called EBS, and EBS stands for Elastic Block Storage. In Elastic Block Storage, you can, you can actually tell it you want to have a specific amount of IOPS. And what's useful about that is that you can do high performance computing by specifically mounting a, a volume and telling it, let's say you want to have 10,000 IOPS per second. So you can, unlike a laptop or a workstation where you're, you're, you have a fixed capacity of disk IOPS, you can have a, almost an unlimited amount of disk IOPS using their uh, block storage system now the block storage system won't be able to uh, be accessed by a second virtual machine. So the, the other solution that's available is something called EFS. And EFS is really useful in that you can mount uh, this shared network file system on multiple machines. And these multiple machines uh, can, can do things like uh, have a common uh, source code that they that they use to distribute work uh, it could also share data between jobs it can grow the disk io as well according to the size so in terms of uh, offerings in the cloud I, I i think efs is one of the more interesting ones and, and so let me just dive into that briefly and, and talk about a particular workflow that you could use with the elastic file system so the Elastic file system is been, it's really a rebranding of the word uh, NFS. 
and NFS, the network file system, has been around for quite some time. And I believe it was created by the Sun uh, company, which used to have an operating system uh, that was called Solaris. And the, the tagline at the time, I, I, I believe, was called the, the network is the computer. So we'll say the network is the computer. The network is the computer. And what's what was neat about this is that with with something like a, a network uh, operating system, you you can do some some really powerful workflows. And one one example of this would be that you could have this network file system uh, that again could go up in the storage automatically, and it all also can. Uh, automatically get uh, faster because as you grow more storage, it'll increase the disk I/O uh, to to accommodate that, and then also it can auto archive uh, files that aren't used uh, frequently. So you'll pay less money for it. Uh, so it has these really advanced capabilities to it. And then what it what it means is in terms of a workflow is if you launch a spot instance, for example, on AWS. Uh, what you can what you can do is actually mount centrally. We'll just say these are spot instances. You could have lots of them, uh, a cluster. Maybe you could have, you know, one thousand spot instances launched to do some work, and then all of them have the same uh, mount point. And then because they have the same mount point, this really simplifies many things. It simplifies the deployment of software. There there really is no deployment necessary because of the fact that you just mount, let's say, a script directory here. And then inside of that script directory, uh, you can actually run uh, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. Let, let's say it's a computer vision job or a machine learning job or some other operation. You can do that automatically because the code's always available. Likewise, when the job is complete, the, the data can also uh, be written to this uh, network file system. This can be uh, really useful in that there isn't some other process like a, a big data system that has to be spun up. It's all implicit to the system. So the EFS really is, or the, the network file system really is a, a useful feature that is becoming more and more prevalent in, inside of workflows in the cloud. And in particular, there's a new workflow Besides just spot instances, you can also tell uh, serverless, which we'll get into next week. You can tell serverless machines now, I believe this is a new component on AWS, that they can mount the, the same file, file storage system as well. So what's helpful about that is that you can have these stateless uh, uh, functions that can write their data transparently to uh, Elastic File System.